Welcome back to our channel. It's Jane here from Avoda Business Advisory. I'm just wanting to jump on and share with you how to create and send invoices to your customers or clients. So um, once again, we're in a demo company uh, and we've got our business dashboard. Now from here, there are two options to get to invoices. You can click on this plus tab up here and click on create new invoice or you can go to business and invoices or sales over overview. So just for this demo, I'm going to do my favorite way, which is to go to invoices. So this one here gives you an overview of all the invoices that you've ever entered. Uh, so you've got all drafts, awaiting approval, awaiting payment and all your invoices that have been paid. And of course, your repeating invoices, which are the ones you set up that might send out automatically once a week, once a month and so forth. Uh, I'll go through setting up repeating invoices in another video. Uh, so just for this demo, uh, we will create a new invoice. So we can go just click on new invoice or if we do the drop down, then you've got your repeating invoice option as well. So we'll just go invoice. So this brings up your new sales invoice screen. Now, just to make a note, we are in the classic invoicing option. There is the option to switch to new invoicing here. Um, I'm not going to do that now. I will go over that over the new invoicing option uh, in another video. So uh, firstly, we want to uh, fill in the two box, which is just going to be your customer or client. Uh, if you've already set them up, uh, once you start typing their name, it will come up under your contacts. So I want to send it to ABC Furniture, so we'll just click that. Um, of course, if you haven't set up your contact, it's a good idea to go to the contacts tab and set them up as a contact with all their information, such as email address and phone number. Uh, if you are feeling lazy, you can just type it straight into the two box, but it will only populate their name. Uh, so not recommended to do that. Uh, can get a bit messy uh, when you do come to looking at your contacts. Uh, so that automatically populates the date, which is today's date. Uh, so what you want to do then is fill out the due date. Uh, so you can do that manually. So for this exercise, we could just click on the 13th of October, which is a week later, or you could do the 20th, or you could go the following month. Um, so let's just go a week later. Uh, I will make a note that within the contact, you can actually customize the due dates for particular contacts. So for ABC Furniture, uh, we could set their contact to say, yes, automatically invoice uh, for a week later. So due a week later or due a month later. Uh, there's also the other option if you want all of your invoices to be a week later, you can go to the invoice settings. Um, I'll quickly show you where to access invoice settings. So you just want to click on your company name and go settings. I'm just going to open in a new tab and you'll go invoice settings. And it is default settings. So here you can set the bills and sales. So you would you would change the date of the sales. Um, while we're in here, uh, you can, this is where you set up the invoice numbers as well. Um, so if you've got a brand new fresh zero file, you could change that to one or double zero one or triple zero one. And it's just going to keep going. Um, progressively higher uh, each new invoice you create. And of, of course, this um, these letters here can be altered as well. Um, a classic one would be INB for invoice. 
right, now let's go back to the demo um, of the sales invoice. So you can see here that has automatically populated the invoice number. Um, you can edit that as well if you need to for any reason. Uh, now the next box is reference. So most of the time, I know for our business, we leave that blank. Uh, that is a perfect spot to put a purchase order number or uh, a little note pertaining to what the invoice is or a job number. If you, you know, you're renovating houses or building houses, you can put the job number uh, for that particular house or property. Uh, the branding, uh, this is also changed in invoice settings. And you can see your different branding themes here. Now, I will go over that in another video, but there are your, those are your branding options and that's where you select it here by clicking on the branding tab. All right, now the next thing to note is this file button here. So what that is, is that you can, you can attach files to the invoice. So um, we, don't, we don't normally use this, but you can say attach a purchase order, or let's say you renovated a house and you want to put photos in it, you can attach photos to it. Uh, so what you'll do is go upload, just attach the, the file and you can see here, um, it's just sitting in there, but that at the moment, that's just for our own use. So for our own reference to refer back to, if you want the client to be able to see that file, you just want to click on the cog here and go include with invoice. And then that moves up here to include with the invoice. All right, now of course, add from file library is all the files that you've got within your zero file library. So just for now, we're going to leave that um, to include it with the invoice. Now, the next thing we can do is type in the description. So we have done um, consulting work um, for ABC Furniture, one, actually let's make this more proper, let's consulting work per hour. We've done one hour of consulting work, our price is $100 for an hour. Now that automatically um, has gone to our 200 sales account and it has um, automatically populated the tax rate which is GST on income. Now it is GST on income because this demo company is registered for GST. Uh, if you're not registered for GST uh, that will uh, I think be BAS excluded and you won't be able to charge GST on those invoices. Um, so that's obviously if your zero file is set up not to have GST. All right, so we can see, you can select the region as well. Uh, that might be good if you have, yeah, service a particular side of the country or side of your suburb. Um, you can, uh, yeah, select which area um, you've serviced. Uh, you can, edit these as well. So the total amount you can see has automatically pulled from the unit price and the quantity. Obviously, if we change the quantity, it's going to change the total amount at the end. Now you can see the total at the bottom is 110. So this is due to this box here um, being amounts a tax exclusive. So you can change that to tax inclusive, which is going to say, give you the straight amount of $100. All right, now I just want to explain to you why um, this sales account, when that 
it automatically selected that, but you can change that um, to any of these other revenue items. And when you change that, it automatically inputs the tax rate as well. So I'll just show you how that is automatically populated. So if we go back to our second screen here and go accounting and chart of accounts. Let's just shorten that to the revenue. You can see here that the 200 sales account is GST on income. So that's where the invoice gets that information from. All right, now we're just going to do another line. I'm just going to show you this item, what this means. So if you're invoicing something on a regular basis, you can import items as such. So we can select one of these and it automatically fills out the description and the unit price. Obviously you can change the quantity um, and of course it automatically inputs the account as well. All right now to edit your items, I'm just going to show you in the other tab. It is under business and products and services. All right, so this is where you'll find all your items. All right, they're all in there. All right, now you can obviously add a new item, import from a file, um, and even export if you're wanting to do a stock take or something like that. Um, yeah, I won't go into too much detail, but that from your invoicing area, this is where it gets its information from. Right, once again, perfect for if you're invoicing particular items on a regular basis, it saves the work of having to type in the description every single time. All right, so a couple options here. You can either save it as a draft. Uh, so you could go save as a draft, save and submit for approval. Um, you don't need, likely only do that if you don't have approved invoices on your user settings, if your manager hasn't given that to you. Uh, or we can go approve, approve and add more invoices, approve and print and so forth. So let's just go approve because that's nine times out of 10, that's what we do. <clears throat> All right, now you can see that is automatically changed to awaiting payment. All right. Um, you've got the option here to receive a payment, but we don't probably don't need to worry about that when we've just sent out the invoice. Let's go back to, no, let's show you how to email um, the invoice. So you can go email and that email will automatically pull from the contact information that you set up. The subject will automatically fill as per what you've got in your um email invoice settings and it will also automatically fill this message for you as well. Um, you can of course edit this if you need to type in something in, in particular um, and of course you can edit the subject line as well. So to edit this template if you ever need to do that we just want to go um, to invoice settings Actually, no, I apologise, it's email settings we want to go to. All right, so we just want to click on edit and you can see here all your invoice settings. So you can edit the sales invoice or you can create a new email template as well. So that's where it gets the information um, from to fill in this message and the subject line. Let's just get out of that. Um, you also have the option here to print to PDF. All right, so that's perfect if you want to save a copy onto your computer or 
you want to attach it in an email outside of Xero. Uh, so if you're going to print a PDF and then send it outside of Xero, you can say mark as sent. If you're planning on sending it later, probably best to say leave as is. All right, so um, yeah, of course you've got your invoice options here to make it a turn it into a repeating invoice, void it, copy it to another invoice, edit, add a credit note, or share the invoice, um, which is uh, if you share that, it's, it's just a link that you can share um, via email to your customer. All right, so just for the demo, we're going to go email and then send, and then it's going to be marked as sent. You can edit it here to include the PDF attachment as well or send yourself a copy. All right, now let's go back to invoices and you can see now this one we've created here. So once you've emailed that, it will say sent. Uh, and then you can see here yeah, where we've attached our extra file. Uh, so yeah, once that is paid and you've reconciled that against the payment that's coming, it'll obviously move to the paid tab. And yeah, that's it for yeah, sales invoices to your customers. If you've got any questions, uh, feel free to comment on the channel and I'll try and get back to you or offer you yeah, further information or links to particular websites that might be able to help you further. Uh, if you did like this video, please give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to our channel for more updates on Xero and anything extra that I've mentioned in this video. Thank you.